Good morning and welcome to church. Um, this morning, the first song we'll sing is uh, page 273, Jesus Paid It All. Oh, really? That's what you got. That's what you got on the list. Sorry. Is that not what you wanted to... Two seventy three. I'm not as organized as my sister. <laughs> Apple Town. So before we go to the Lord in prayer, is there any there that we have to add to the list? As you see, uh, Big Dan is in ICU. He has COVID. Barb said that he'll probably be moving today to a med to a med sir. Um, is oh yeah. Um, the Nason family, I know Chris works with a few of them. Is there any others we need to add to the prayer list? Yes. Uh, Auto workers. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm sure that is affecting a lot. Right. Right. Okay. Any others? Um, yeah, I was. I was. Yeah, I'll put that when we do announcements too. But. Um, for Max Yonce's funeral is next, is that Saturday? Yeah. Saturday. So, um, just for the family, for Ma for uh, Marge too, you know, prayers for Marge. Um, if there's none other, then we will, <clears throat> we'll go to the Lord in prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, again we come to you thanking you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. His death, his burial, and his resurrection brings us, the freedom, brings us the freedom from sin, that the bonds that have shackled us to sin are now broken free. And we, everything that we have done in sin is paid for. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the week that you've brought us through, that you've taken care of all our needs and you've protected us. We ask you, Lord, though, for those that are, are still with illness, still have pain, that you are there to help them, to be with them. Those families that have lost a dear one and um, just uh, the few families that have lost someone, just be the comforter for them. And if they don't know of your son, put us in the pathway that we may deliver that gospel to them and that they have comfort in it. We ask you too, Lord, for those that are sick, like Big Dan that has COVID, and those that, are, that have COVID, we know that is going around again. And then for those that are, the, the other sick that's going around, the illnesses that are going around, we just ask that you take care of them. For those that are in the hospital too, Amber and Michaela, we just ask that you uh, raise them up and take care of them. And Mark Greyer, just a few of the personal ones. And not only that, for those that are, um, uh, that could be affected by the, by this strike that you just help those to move forward and to settle things peacefully. We know it's your world and you direct everything we do. And we just ask that you take care of us as we move forward. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Uh, page 650, I'd rather have Jesus.
Okay. All right, before the last song, uh, announcements. As we said before, uh, Max's funeral next Saturday, September 30th, and I didn't get a time. Yeah, Kelly sent it to me, but I forgot what it was. Is it on Facebook? Okay. Okay. I, I, I think that, I thought that's what Kelly said, but I can't, yeah, she texted me. Right, so, and that'll be over in TAC night there. Um, and then communion next week, and then you guys, I heard today, you said you're almost, the camp is almost yes. down for the year. Oh, and good, done for the year, yes. good. And thank you very much yes. for you guys doing that. Uh, yeah, everything going on. Yeah. Right. And then on there, um, just some personal things. Uh, New Beginnings, Barb's wrote off, if you to read uh, their uh, newsletter for the month, for September. <coughs> and then you see on there just the congratulations of Christy. She was down, just personal item. She, we were down Thursday. Uh, Friday, Friday for her union, and she won a grievance leadership award. So, for for Minnesota, Minnesota and Iowa, she was so. So yeah, that's good for her. <laughs> and I, we keep having to encourage her because she didn't want to go, and her rep said. It's a good thing you did, or I'd have to find you and kick your butt. Yeah, because so. she, she didn't tell me anything <laughs> yeah. about it. Yeah, Chris didn't know anything about it. So, <laughs> anyways, just that was just a personal note. So, what's the last song you want to do? Oh, before I, yes, Rachel. I did look it up. It is at 12 o'clock start. Noon. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. It's open to the public. Open. Oh. So. Okay. Yeah. I suppose through their Facebook. I'm sure. I'm sure. So. sure. Um, yeah, before we go, is there any other announcements? Anything else? Um, just touch on last week. I just said if there's anybody that wanted to get a verse in the morning, uh, every day, a verse of the day, whatever. Um, I do have three that I'm texting. And then again, the, there's about 25 on the Snapchat of the kids that are doing it. And it's going over well. And thank you for asking questions because it does. Um, some, of the young, some of the young campers are the young men and women there. They, they, they ask to have the verse explained, which is very good. And I, hopefully I'm explaining it well. So... Um, it's very intriguing for them to watch them read it and then react to it. So um, if anybody wants to, like again, like I said, um, just starting and trying this. So if you want a text message, a verse of the day, or on Snapchat, what have you, let me know. Um, we'll keep moving forward with that. So. Sure, and I think last Sunday, I on the youth one, uh, I put a verse out, and I backed it up with a second verse, and it it seemed to really help not only for them for me because it it adds to it. It exp one as the Bible does one verse explains another or one pairs well with another to explain a broader deal so it's good it's good and it's keeping these young young ones in the bible thinking of of god and i think we're only missing a few of the counselors one or two of the counselors um yeah lala and there's just a couple of but also not only uh, not only the counselors but i've added some of the camp kids kids that have gone to camp that aren't counselors too They've asked to be added in it. So, 
If you want to, just let me know. I do it every morning for between 7, 7.30, unless it's like busy. <laughs> yeah, I usually get it out before 8 o'clock. So let me know if you'd like to uh, be added to that. So with that, we'll move on to the last song before the message. Which one? Page 56, God will take care of you. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Chris, for help there. Um, so we've been, we switched over to John here a few weeks ago. And I, th you know, just t talking with a few people, uh, uh, enjoy going back into John. You know, it, John is a book that it's one of the Gospels. And from time to time, beings that we understand the Gospel, we kind of skip over, especially the beginnings of John and Matthew and Mark and Luke. We skip over the beginnings because we concentrate more on the ends of those books with with Christ, either with his birth or with his death. But John, as he said, to just revisit the whole book is something. To learn how or when he started his ministry, to the miracles he did, and the following he had is, is something, you know, we, we need to um, sometimes bring it back to that. And John is not only that, it, John is a good book to first start in, to first understand, to first understand as a believer. When you first become a believer, John is a very good book to start there. So we'll pick up where we left off last week, and that was in John 5 and verse we did 25 last week, but we'll start back at 25. And it says there, Verily, verily, and this is Christ speaking. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, 
and believeth on him, excuse me, I'm on 24, uh, believeth him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And the reason I wanted to back up to that is the very, the very essence of the gospel is right there. You know, we read, we read, uh, Christ didn't come to the world, didn't come unto the world to condemn the world, he came to save the world that was already condemned. And that's what it is saying here. I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and he's talking God's word, his word, the Holy Spirit's word. And believe on him that sent me. Believe God. Believe Christ. And believe the Holy Spirit. Hath everlasting life. And what is it that we believe? Well, he goes on to say, And shall not be condemned, but is passed from death unto life. And you believe what Christ did on the cross. And here is before he went to the cross, and he says, if you believe the word that he said that sent me. You know, at this point, they're looking forward to Christ going on the cross. So if you believed his word, and his word was from the uh, prophet saying, uh, Messiah will come and he will die for your sins. And that's what he's saying. If you believe that word that God has taught that I am going to the cross and I will die for your sins. We look back at it and we look and say, if you believe what he did on the cross, you will be saved. At that point, Christ is saying, you believe what I'm going to do on the cross, you will be saved. Your sins will be paid for. Verse 25, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming. And that's what he's talking about. We backed up to 24 because God said, This is what's going to happen, and if you believe it, you will be saved. Now Christ is saying, The hour is coming. Meaning, time is leading up to him being on the cross. And it, and it goes on and says, And now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear it shall live. Remember, at this point in time, no one was saved. Those that had faith of what Christ was going to do were all in Abraham's bosom. So anyone that walked the earth was dead. Remember it said in 24, but it is passed from death unto life. So those on the, on the earth were now dead. We were, we were all dead. Before we were saved, we were condemned to death. <clears throat> and that's why he's saying now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, they will hear God, Christ, and those that believe, and they shall hear, um, and they that hear shall live. Those that understand what he's there for, those that believe afterward what he did on the cross shall live. 26, it says, For as the Father hath life, in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. That means he brought him to earth. He walked the earth as a human. He came to life. 27, and it says, And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Give him the authority, made him king of kings. He came through the seed of Abraham, which God promised the Messiah would come through. 
So he was the rain on the earth. He was the king of the Jewish nation on earth. And that's what he ties into there. Verse 28, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. And that goes back to those that had faith in what God said that had died already now will hear his voice. They will, because at that point in time, before your sins were paid for, before our sins were paid for, before Christ died on the cross, God could not hear us because we are sinners. If that's, it's hard to understand. He hears when we cry in the wilderness, and that means he hears our voice when we cry for him to help us, but he doesn't have direct communication as we are sinners. While we were sinners, he does not have direct communication with us. He cannot hear us. He knows, but he doesn't hear because he cannot look upon sin. But if you reach out, if you're a sinner and you reach out to the Lord and just say, please help me, I need to know how to get to your perfect heaven. He hears that. And he will move or instrument people to be in the path of that person so that they hear his gospel. And that's what he's saying is those that are finally going to be able to hear his voice when Christ pays for all sin on the cross, they will finally be able to hear his voice. And then verse 29, it says, And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And he's putting it forth that at this point in time, when Christ died on the cross, you will either have life or you will have death. Before that, we only had death. We are all on the highway to death. After Christ, uh, after we believe what Christ did on the cross, his death on the cross, now we have two highways. The highways to death, because those are the non-believers, and the highway to life. That is the believers of what Christ did. And that's what he is saying. You can go unto the resurrection of life or those that have done evil, which is not believe what Christ did on the cross, to the resurrection of death. Verse 30, it says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. And he said it takes all. God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is just. And that is what it, it, it also refers to us. Is what we hear is it good or bad? Is what Christ did good or bad? And that's our, our only judgment. Our judgment is, do we believe what he did on the cross or do we not? And that's the only judgment we have of our own, of our own self. But he says, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. And the Father was to save. <clears throat> we move on to verse 31, and it says, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. 
And Christ is talking, as he's talking to people in front of him that do not believe what is going on. He says, if I bear witness of myself, myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bear witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. And we'll come to the conclusion of this. We'll keep moving through this. Because it's, it's, for us, it may be a hard to understand as what Christ is saying. And it says in 33, Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. For John foretold, he was the one that announced, and he was the one that preceded Christ and told everybody, the Messiah is here. There he is. Look, there he is. And that is the witness that he bore unto him. Christ couldn't come onto the scene and say, look, I'm the Messiah. He did it in ways as like the woman of the well, follow after me and you will never thirst. But John announced him. John witnessed. Remember? It's just like, if you think of the renaissance days and when the king entered into the courtyard or entered into some public place horns would go off and then pre-announce so and so that is what John did John was like the town crier he announced the entrance of the savior and gave witness unto him. Because if you think of it, who believed Jesus Christ when he said? The Jewish people did not believe him, and a lot of people did not believe him, saying, why do you put yourself in this high place? You claim you are the Son of God. And when they questioned John, they said, how do you know? Well, I was told by the prophets that this is who he is. And I see it. I see the angels descend from heaven onto Christ. And that's why he was the, bear, the, the witness to, that bear um, to Christ. Verse 34, it says, But I have received not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He said, I have one that witnessed me, but now I am to say this, and if you listen to what I say, and you believe what I say, then you will be saved. 35. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. 36, but I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father have, hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And he said, as great a witness as John was for me, my works will be even greater. What I do at the cross is what the God has sent me to do, and that will be the greatest witness for me. And for you. Because at that point in time, you know, you understand it as a witness. Is Christ died on the cross. We all seen that, or those had seen it. We believe it. He died on the cross. He was put in the tomb. And three days later, he was not in the tomb. There was witness unto that. 
And not only that, there was prophecy onto that. And it fulfilled the prophecy. And that's why it says, but I have a greater witness than that of John. Verse 37, it says, And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. He's telling them that, listen, up to this point, you have not heard his voice, and you have not seen of him. You've not heard God's voice, and you've not seen his shape. Verse 38, and it says, And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. And it's quite a deal that where Christ has led and gone through, and he keeps bringing it up and up, you know, and these are all Christ's words as he's speaking unto these people. Listen. You don't believe the Father. The Father that has sent me, God has sent me to die for your sins. And you do not believe him. Because his word does not abide in you. All that was sent to you before from Moses and Abraham, from David. And you have moved away from it. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Verse 39, and it says, Search the scriptures, for in them they, ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. He says, search the scriptures. And what he's talking about is look at the law. You believe that you are perfect in the law, but you are not. Because if you truly understood the Bible and you truly understood the law, that you knew it was me, Christ, who will cleanse, cleanse ye of your sins. My blood will pay for your sins. Verse 40, And ye will not come to me, that ye may have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and receive, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. And he's like, listen, you know, there's five verses I covered there, and he says, You've been told and told, I will come, the Messiah will come, but you doubt that it is I. But if it was somebody else with higher potential, you would believe him. And you have, don't have God's love in you. If it was a hype, you would believe that he was the Savior. But because I am not a hype, you do not believe in me. <clears throat> Verse 44, it says, How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Saying you put each other on a pedestal, and as one grows more popular, that's who you put your faith in. But here I am, but you do not believe me. And the highest authority, 
has given me the power, but you do not believe him. And that honor cometh from God only. And that's what he said. He's, he's the highest authority. And he's given it unto me, the power unto me. But you believe not. Verse 45, it says, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuse you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. And we'll finish out the chapter by saying, with verse 47. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And he said unto the Israelites, Listen, Moses already had given you the word of God of me. Talking Christ, all this is of Christ. But you believed him not. But you didn't believe what he said. He wrote of me. But who did you trust? You trusted yourself. And that is not right. When Moses give you the law, you trusted yourself to keep that law perfect. And none of us can. But Moses also said, there will be a Savior that will come and save you from the law. One that the law does not affect. And they didn't believe him. They believed that they could do it on their own. As any sinner, as a sinner, you can believe you can do it on your own. But as a believer, we've taken that first step in saying, I cannot do it on my own. I need someone else to save me. And that's what the gospel says, that he will save you. Because you understand you cannot do it on your own. You cannot be perfect. You cannot be sinless. But Christ, who was sinless, can do it for you. And he paid that law for you, for us. And believing that gives us his righteousness that we may enter into God's perfect heaven where no sin is allowed. And he was saying at the end, you didn't believe Moses' words when Moses said, the law pertains to me. Why would you believe my words? Christ is saying, why would you believe my words if you didn't believe Moses, who you hold as a great man? Why would you believe me? And that comes back to that of popularity and in, in, in not only that of once in a while when somebody says, I am this, does somebody truly believe because they are saying it themselves? Then to have somebody else say, oh, that is so-and-so. You're more apt to believe the person that says it than the person that says it of another than a person that says it of themselves. And that's what Christ was getting at. The witness. John was the witness for Christ. And they believed him. Look how many followed him. But as Christ moved through, not many believed him. They believed his teachings, and they started to understand his teachings. But he said, listen, when it comes to the point where I'm on the cross, that will be the greatest witness. I mean, it was over 2,000 years ago that Christ died on the cross. And we, as believers, are still witnessing 
unto Christ on the cross. And that's why he say, that is the greatest witness. Because he saves us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the love that you've given unto us. And may the words that we read of your love fill us and take us unto um, whatever you have us to do. And please, Lord, if there's anybody that is looking for help, looking for your help, that you may put us in their path, that we may share the gospel unto them, that they will believe what your son, believe your words, believe your gift. We thank you, Lord, for the grace that you have put onto us and taken care of us. And please, Lord, as we go through the next week and come back to share more of your love, you just take care of all our needs and just bring us back safely as we come to hear more of your love. We thank you again for Christ who died on the cross. His death, his burial, and his resurrection is all we need to enter into your perfect heaven, to have eternal life, to have his righteousness. And we thank you for that. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And with that, the verse that I've brought out for church today <clears throat> is, um, is in Luke. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. And it's Christ talking there, and it says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Thank you, and have a very good week. <laughs>